What's up guys, Rob here from Decoded. If you've ever downloaded a Blender material from somewhere like BlendSwap before, you may have came across something like this. Some kind of unusual node that you've never seen before. It'll have a strange name, it might be a different colour, and all the inputs and outputs will have really weird names to them. If you do a search in the node, uh, the node section, you won't be able to find it anywhere. And the reason you can't find it is because it's actually a custom node. Blender calls these node groups because essentially what they are is they're just a collection of default Blender nodes that you've put together and Blender will treat it like it's one single node. So if I select this weird node here and I press the tab button, which is how you always edit things in Blender, then it'll show us something like this. Everything goes green. That means we're inside the group node and it's just a noise texture, a multiply and a Voronoi into a bump. Right, so we can use this for a lot of very powerful things. So in this video, I'm going to explain what node groups are for, how you might want to use them. Then I'm going to show you how to make them yourself because they're really easy to do. Okay, so the first thing that you might want to use these for is basically just to clean up your node system. We've all seen those nodes before. I've, I've pulled this image off the internet, but like we've all seen these ridiculous cobweb nodes where it's, it's just all over the place and you can't figure out what anything is. Well, with a node group, you could select certain regions, let's say all these uh, top nodes here, and you could you could put them into a group and then you would only be able to change the settings that actually matter. Anything else that might break the effect, you can just leave out. And instead of having a huge mass like this, you can make it a lot easier. For instance, um, I've recently been working on a new material for my Patreon account. It's gonna be the first material that I do a giveaway on. And it's, um, I tried to make a marble shader that was really versatile for polished marble. Because I use marble a lot for interior scenes, but it's quite hard to get good marble shaders online and there's very few textures for it. So I made this one where I can do all sorts of different marble textures. The problem is, when I came back a few days later and had a look at the node setup, I couldn't remember what half the nodes do. So if I can't remember what they do, you guys wouldn't be able to just figure it out straight away. So what I did is I put them into this node group and you can see I've added a frame here quickly that just has all the default settings so I don't have to forget what they are if I wanna come back to it. I don't have to remember, sorry. But um, basically you can't break this effect. No matter, all of the names now are very intuitive. You can tell what things do by what they're named. And no matter how you play around with these sliders, you can't break the material. So for instance, the scale obviously scales the whole thing and gives you like different values for that. You can change this veins and you can get all like the cracks. You can change the fractal amount and the distortion and the color strength. And obviously you can change the actual color itself and you can get a million different combinations here without having to go through like the, the node setup and try and figure out what each one of these does. Um, the second way that it's really, really powerful is that you can actually add these node groups again and again. So if I go Shift A to add a new node and go to group, you can see that we've got this weird node and we've got the marble. We can drop this in, we can drop it into this material, we can drop it into a completely different material. You can also append it into a different blender scene you can even add group nodes inside group nodes so if we open this one up i can i can't add like the marble node into the marble node because that's like a paradox thing but i can add like say this noise one into here uh what that can come in really handy for is if you have a scene where you need to add the same node setup to multiple materials for instance on this old render i did before um, I needed to add the same like dusty material to every single material in this scene. Like, if I zoom in on the on the TV, you can see on the screen it's got all these like dusty marks, and that was quite a complex node setup. So instead of like copying and pasting the nodes and adding them into every single thing, I just made one node group that was called like dust, and then I could just quickly append that into every single material, and it saved me a bunch of time and it came out looking really good. Um, what you can also do with these is you can make it a fake user if you press this button here 
delete everything else out of the scene and then go file defaults save startup file and then every time you open up blender you'll have any node group that you've saved like that automatically in there so if you make a material for something you use all the time let's say um like a metal shader that you're really happy with or a plastic and like the sort of thing you're just constantly going to want to add to your scene then you can quickly add that in without having to remake the same material over and over again or without having to go through all your files and like append it in it's much faster for doing that uh, so i'll show you how to set one of those up now so well, let's go to this material over here and i'm going to add the same noise thing i made before so i'm going to do a search here for a noise node and then i'm going to add in a voronoi node and i think we'll just multiply these together and we'll stick them through a bump and get the normal and we're going to plug that into the normal that'll give us something like this now to make these into a group all I need to do is select them all and then press Control and G and everything goes green and that means you're into a group now. Now we can go back into the regular view by pressing Tab and we can name this whatever we want. So let's call this um, Group 1 and then inside this Group 1 node you'll have two different things. You'll have a Group Input over here and a Group Output. And that controls the group output will be what comes out and you can connect to different nodes and the group input is going to be what you bring into it. So if we want to add some inputs to this so we can change the values, let's decide what values we want to change. Let's say we want to be able to change the strength and uh, this scale and the randomness, right? Changing the randomness makes it all go like kind of square. Right, so that's the first one I'm going to do. So I'm going to press N and you'll get this set in here. If we want nodes, you can see we've got ones for input here. So if we make a new input, then we get a few settings up here. The first thing we can do is name it. So instead of calling it randomness, I'm going to call it, I'm going to call that square. And I'm going to get the square and I'm going to connect that up to randomness. And then it's got some values here. It says default value, which is, as you'd imagine, what you want it to start on. So let's say we're going to call this one and we're going to have the maximum to one and the minimum, let's say, um, 0.3. So now if we go back into this view, we can't go lower than 0.3. I can't slide it lower than 0.3 and I can't take it higher than one. I can make it lower than 0.3 if I type it in manually but I can't slide it lower than that and I can't go higher than 1. Then we can add in another input for instance here and let's call this um, scale and we can connect the, that up to multiple values at once. So let's set this to like 10, 0, and 15 and now if you play around with the scale on one it's now affecting both of them at the same time you don't have to do that obviously I could have added two different scale values but you can it's very versatile because you can control multiple ones at once if you want to have multiple outputs as well then it's the same sort of thing if you go to outputs press add it'll give you a new option over here so we could get the multiply and we could call this a different output like multiply default value I'll leave that to zero and um, put one and 100 and now we can get this multiply set and we could put it into something like the roughness without it going through the bump so like I said, guys, this is really, really versatile. You can use this for a hell of a lot of things. I use them all the time now in my work. I never used to touch them. I didn't really know what they were for. If you'd like to download that marble texture that I showed you earlier on, then you'll need to be a subscriber on my Patreon account. I'll leave a link to that below. If you found the video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you're one of my recent subscribers, because I got quite a few this week, 
then welcome to the channel thank you for joining us i hope you find the content going forward to be useful to you thanks very much guys i'll see you around